If you are planning on buying a new budget gaming system, the new Ryzen G APU may be a good choice, but there's something you need to know. In this video, you're gonna see the integrated Vega GPU clock scaling, the memory frequency scaling, some gameplay with live in-game overclock, the benchmark of the two APU, and then the two APU with some dedicated graphics card like GTX 1060 and GTX 1080, the BIOS setting I use, and then a quick analysis. Overclocking the GPU can give you a good 20% of performance increase and it's a very easy task to do, you can do it in the BIOS or by Ryzen Master and there's no need to raise the voltage. Keep in mind that with my sample, the 2400G, I had to use liquid cooling to reach 1600 MHz in the GPU. Memory. This is the most important part. Like it or not, you need a good memory kit. Ryzen is very picky with memory. Above 3200 is difficult to be stable. And my advice is go with a kit like the Flare X 3200C14, which the performance is more or less like another kit 3600C16. In this first session, I'm running the memory at 2400. As you can see, the FPS is not bad. But there's a big difference with a faster speed. Double kill. Now I loaded the XMP profile of the Flare X. And you see the big change. It never goes below 60. In the top right corner you can see as well the power consumption. Usually during game we are like 100. 130, something like this. It's low. It's really low. <sighs> now I'm going to overclock the GPU to 1600 megahertz. And we are more in the 70 FPS range. Look in the power, we are now at 135 watts. Still very good though. raise the GPU frequency at 4 GHz. There's no big difference. Double kill. At least in this game the CPU is more than enough even at default speed. I really like this CPU. Stock cooler, 4 GHz, 60 degree. With an eSport kind of game was easy, but now to reach at least 30 FPS, it is not. The GPU is clearly having hard times, we are talking about 20 FPS. I don't know if you can see in the video, but it's not very good play like this.
overclocking the CPU and GPU doesn't help. We're still in the mid 20. With this memory speed, I was unable to run the GPU at uh, 1600 MHz. I had to lower it down at 1500. And as you can see, we are still below uh, like a decent minimum FPS. Okay, let's try again, but this time with a Trident Z, 3600 MHz. We had an improvement, but it's not enough. I think we made it. Now we have a more or less solid 30 FPS. Everything is smooth. <gasps> I know what you're thinking. You need faster RAM, but the memory is crazy high and what if I buy one stick and then another? Bad idea. In single channel you basically kill the FPS. If you look at the system memory, we are like 4.75 gigabytes. If you're on a budget, just buy a fast 8GB kit. Last try. CPU and GPU overclocked. One stick. Nothing changed. We just saw the 2200G in action, and if you see the benchmarks, with some overclocking is more or less the same as the bigger brother. They can handle as well a dedicated graphics card. In this case the 2400G performs a bit better, the extra threads does help. If you consider the price point against the Ryzen 7, they have an outstanding value. For the test I used a Gigabyte AB 350N. I only used the XMP profile. Really really plug and play. No need to touch the voltages. And here I found an option to enable the XFR 2.0. It's well hidden, but I don't know if it's working, so I have to do more tests. You can also set the dedicated memory up to 2 gigabyte, and that's it. We're done. After all this test, I'm really amazed by this Joe APU. Price performance is unbelievable. Okay, yeah, the small one have only four threads, but the integrated GPU is very easy to overclock, and it can match the performance of the bigger brother. 
there's no need for an aftermarket cooler and with that money just buy a good memory kit. The Ryzen 5 2400G with its 8 threads and a higher GPU clock speed is the perfect solution for someone that needs multi-threading and it delivers good performance even without overclock. Speaking about overclocking, for the non-expert my advice is that you can leave the CPU at stock frequency, raise the GPU to 1400 and again a good and fast memory kit.